Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Fearman. I am a data scientist with the Stockholm Environment Institute. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Evi Atlas, uh, which was an outcome from one of the earlier ES hackathons. Uh, Evi Atlas is an app uh, that's designed to help people who are working on evidence synthesis maps um, sort of view their data geospatially. Um, it's built on R and Shiny, and it uses Leaflet, ggplot, and a couple of other common tools under the hood. Eviatlas was built um, by a number of contributors, uh, including Sunita Dobinjar, myself, Matthew Granger, Charles Gray, Neil Hathaway, Martin Westgate, and Esgi Tan River Eider. Um, many of them are at this conference and are participating online. Um, so you can ask myself or any of them for questions as we go. Uh, to access the app itself, um, we can view it at shinyapps.io, and the URL is estech.shinyapps.io slash eviatlas. Uh, later on, we can go over uh, how to clone the repository that holds this code off GitHub and run eviatlas locally. Um, but to start, um, I think it's easiest to um, just access the app from its location on the cloud. Uh, so here we have the app loaded. Uh, again, you can see this yourself if you go to estech.shinyapps.io slash eviatlas. The URL is up on the top of my screen right now. Uh, and here on the main splash page, um, in the center of the page, you can sort of click around and get more information on how to use the tool in detail, more about systematic maps, etc. But what we should focus on on the start is um, this sidebar on the right-hand side. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload um, some of my own data, and this is the sort of thing that you can do once you have data uh, that's got geospatial information. Um, or if you want to follow along with me, um, you can just click the tab that says Sample Data, and that will automatically load up um, the same CSV that I'm about to load myself. Just a little note um, for anyone who's got their own data and is using this tool later on. Uh, right now, the tool takes data uh, that's in CSV format, which is you know, just a common spreadsheet format, as well as um, it takes shape files. So you should be able to upload uh, either one of those formats, and it should be able to get into the tool. Um, sometimes CSVs sort of differ from each other. They might have um, different separators, different encoding, things like that. And so if you need to sort of tinker with settings, there is a little section in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen that allows you to alter CSV properties. Um, this might be helpful if you are having trouble getting your data to load. Um, but if you don't know anything about separators or encoding, you don't need to worry about that for now. Now we'll take a couple of minutes to quickly run through the Evidence Atlas pane, um, which is the uh, really sort of main feature of the app. Um, so one key point of you know any sort of evidence synthesis map, and really every any evidence atlas certainly, uh, is that um, your data has you know geospatial information, latitude and longitude. And what Evi Atlas does is it puts these points nicely on a base map. And now you can sort of customize this base map and use it, one, to either sort of drive your research um, and use it to visualize your research outcomes during your process, or two, uh, people have included the outputs from these Evi Atlas maps um, in published papers. And we'll show you how to do that now. So we start with a base map that um, is pretty plain, um, has points just situated in blue with just information included for each point that is the first column of whatever data you upload. And so we're a little short on time, so I will just run through some of the features that you can do to make your map a little nicer. Now the first one is you can add more information to what sort of pops up as you mouse over points. And I'll just add a couple sort of things here, kind of at random. So now when we mouse over a point and we click, there's some more information that appears. Uh, and again, I, I encourage you all to sort of try and follow along and do this um, at estech.shinyapps.io if you can. Um, another thing we might want to do, and you might want to do if you're 
using MV Atlas is to change your base map. Um, we have some options that are maybe a little less um, intrusive or show topography in a more useful way. Um, finally, what I'll point out is um, it's very useful often to sort of color your points by a different variable so that your map gets a little more information. So just to show you how this works, um, first I will color points by nation. And we can see sort of very clearly that each country has their own color. Um, but something more useful might be to use farming system as our variable here. And so now on the right-hand side, we can see, um, all right, well, the organic studies are sort of scattered about in red. The conventional farming is in yellow. And you know the rest, sort of what seems to be the majority, are also sort of strewn throughout. But we get a little more information on what each study contains. So say we have a map like this, and we want to share it with other collaborators or include it um, in a paper. What you can do is once you have your map set up, you can click the Save Map tab back at the top of the app. That gives you sort of three buttons that appear above your map. The first one saves um, a version of your map as an HTML document. An HTML document is pretty much the same thing that any web page is, and so if you download this to your computer and you open it in any browser, you will be able to see the same map that you had created uh, within Eviatlas, but now it will be sort of contained within a file. And this file um, that you have on your computer, again, can be emailed around or, you know, embedded in a paper or whatever it may be. You know, you can sort of use that file as you will. Um, sometimes maybe what you want to do is just get a snapshot of sort of a given image from your map. So, here what I'll do is I'll make my point size really big for no good reason. And then I'll choose to save my map as a PNG file, as an image file. And you can see I've zoomed in um, you know, pretty dramatically on Ireland. If I go back to my downloads, I've now downloaded this PNG file, click on it. We have this sort of Ireland-centric view. Um, and so that's really the basic functionality. Um, of Evi Atlas. There's a little more to it, but we're short on time, so I'll just stick with that for now. Uh, and finally, we'll finish up with the last tab um, on the left sidebar of Evi Atlas. Uh, an opportunity to click straight through to our GitHub repository, um, which is in sort of the broader R metaverse, and view the source code yourself. Uh, so this is where I will reiterate once again um, and hopefully this is a theme, I believe it's the theme of this whole conference. Um, we encourage sort of anyone of all skill levels to get involved and help. Um, to do so, you um, just need to hop on GitHub, and if you want to sort of add issues or feature requests, we're happy to take those. Um, or if anyone is looking to actually get involved with package development and sort of understand how this works under the hood, um, I certainly am more than willing to take people through this. Um, I myself am a data scientist. I'm sort of not involved in the evidence synthesis world. And so I think the more people that are contributing to the package that are sort of actively doing this research and using this tool, uh, the better it will be. Um, so that's all I'll say on that for now. Um, but certainly something that you know I would love to talk to anyone interested about moving forward. And that's all. Um, it's, I think, four in the morning. Um, for me right now, if you're watching this live uh, at the conference, um, but uh, if you find me on Slack or any of the other contributors, um, I think any of us would be more than happy to talk to anyone else more about this app. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your day.